Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Johnny Radke. I'm um, Elias Mallon. I am Danny Weiss. Uh, well, I th- everyone is sort of kind of uh, involved in, in different projects outside of Kill Hannah. Um, I've been touring in support of uh, my new album with Filter uh, for the last two years. Um, Elias? Uh, I've been playing with a pop artist named Kesha, uh, along with Moonlighting, for a few shows with Johnny in Filter. And I haven't been playing music at all, but I don't think you were answering your question. You asked about, oh, the last time we played it was 2008. 2009. Oh, was it? It was no. January, July 2009. Okay. Yeah, well, that was, you know, that was our last album came out in 2009. And so since then, like these guys were saying, everyone's kind of gone mad. Our singer was in a, a play on Broadway for a while, and he just did a solo album. So everyone's kind of uh, a little scattered, but we came, you know, last year we did a tour of Australia and um, we played a few shows in Chicago and then our Christmas show in Chicago. So this is actually the longest time we've ever gone <clears throat> without a single show at all. Um, but yeah, so maybe we'll keep this up for the next couple of decades, just once a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hope we do more. <laughs> I know you've been working on a new album. Uh, the new album is going to be a lot heavier than the previous. Tell me a little more about the album and what inspired you to in a different direction with the sound. Yeah, um, well, I think for the last album that we did, there were a lot of songs that we didn't get around to tracking in a studio. Um, a lot of them were pretty heavy. Uh, and I don't mean like heavy, like... Lamb of God. Heavy. Yeah, not like <laughs> Lamb of God heavy, but just, you know, um, darker, more intense in that in that realm. Um, you know, we've always been fans of bands like Nine Inch Nails and stuff like that. So, uh, recently over the last year, I've been kind of, um, talking to Matt saying, man, we, you know, these are great, great, great songs. We should, we should track these. So, uh, we just started doing that now. And we had our friend Tom Schleider who, um, who played with us for a, a short amount of time, uh, help, help track drums. And we are in the process of, uh, recording the rest, um, I'm hoping that we get it done by spring. So I think it's going to be an EP. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really stoked about that because I like heavy music. So. Tonight will be the first time that you've played with Johnny since 2008. How did it come about to bring him back for the show and will he be back permanently? Just well, actually, well, that's no, not true. That's yeah. not true because I, I did last year in Chicago. I did the Christmas thing. Okay. Um, and then... Um, you know, since 2009, I've come up and done some stuff with the guys. Um, and, of course, Elias has toured with me as well in Filter. So, but, I mean, this is this is something that last year was the first time that all of us had been on stage together in about four years. And, um, I mean, it was just the, the week leading up to it when we were in rehearsals. Um, <laughs> Greg Corner. Greg's awesome. Here, everybody. Yeah, this is Greg's just the interview, though. Show yeah, it shows. It shows. That we're, no, that's not. That's 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 probably yeah. Greg right. Greg will always come in like a bat out of hell. Well, <laughs> the week leading up to the shows last year, uh, rehearsals. You know, all of us like a lot of old memories came back, and and we had a lot of fun, and and obviously the shows were spectacular, and and we realized that like we were you know this lineup we've always had a great rapport with each other, and and. Um, you know, it just felt right, so we wanted to continue, you know, doing it this way. Hi, Greg. What does the band have in store tonight for their fans since it's been so long? Oh, D. We have two new songs. Two new songs. Two new songs and a bunch of old songs. Uh, and a couple of little surprises production-wise. It's kind of funny. Elias, actually, he lives out here now. And since we've always typically been a Chicago band, and now we're almost more of an L.A. band because the three of the guys live here. Um, but Elias, it's fallen on Elias to, to arrange everything. So all of our mm-hmm. equipment, all of like the lights, and the, even the people, you know, they're all... If anything goes wrong, it's Elias' fault. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. 
That's right. <laughs> Tonight, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I would say that Greg normally takes care of everything uh, when we do a hometown show, but this time it was all me. Yeah, it's all now. So, so lies, yeah. You shared a lot of, or the stage with a lot of great fans in the past, too. Would you like to play a show with that you haven't yet? The Cure. We had the same answer for like 13 years. It's you yeah. 2 and The Cure, all, yeah. the, all the bands we loved, you know, we all kind of share... Uh, no, <laughs> it is not. We, I mean, we played with some bands that we, you know, definitely love and, and grew up on, like the Alice in Chains and, yeah, you know, yeah. Velvet Revolver, Guns N' Roses, but, Smashing yeah, the Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins, yeah, we toured yeah, Smashing we, Pumpkins. We elbows with some of the bands, but never really had a, you know, n the core group that we all love, you know, the bands like U2 and The Cure. It was always kind of our dream to just do, like, an extended tour, you know, where you end up becoming friends with them and then sharing the stage on the last night and, you know, living your whole fantasy like that. So that hasn't happened yet. Superpower for one day, what would it be and what would you use it for good or evil? Hmm. Well, let's oh, that's go. Dan. That's Dan. Oh, that's Dan. Uh, <laughs> the Dan question. Definitely, definitely use it for evil, but there's so many. <laughs> I don't know which which one could I do the most damage with. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have an answer for that. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Greg? How much we want to fly? I probably want to fly. Well, I just want yeah. To Aquaman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I want the. You can talk to fish. You can talk to fish. Yeah, I want. I I want the superpower of showing up on time, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Alliance is already actually a superhero. He's called Super Smoke. Yeah. Can you, if you can smoke your own fingers, <laughs> does, that, does, that, does that count as a superpower? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, that's nitpicking. <laughs> that's just nitpicking. Those are just numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, not it's not 20 years yet. It's not 20 years yet. Yeah, it's yeah. getting close. Well, yeah. What's the greatest memory you've had so far with the band? Oh, I think it's different for everyone. Probably. Yeah, this is, that's a good question. Yeah. I like that. Dan? Let's just go to I was just thinking when we were driving here today, you know, we recorded our first album here, and it was really kind of like... I don't think the kind of record deals that we got exist anymore. Just the industry's changed so much. But we had, you know, they put us up in an apartment, and you know, yeah, yeah I mean, we were living in an apartment. We got a rental car, and we had any, at our disposal any type of guitars we wanted to use or anything. And Amazing that, budget. yeah, it was just kind of a fantasy. And and that's like, you know, at the time we just thought that's how it was, and it was that way at the time for everybody. But now we realize that, you know, nowadays your budgets are going to be like 30 grand to make a record and you know you have to, you can do it all yourself in your home and deliver it to a label so i don't know that it's not just it's not a single memory but a group you know that time i thought was really kind of special for for all of us i think i think for like just watching it grow over the years you know where where we started in the scene in chicago and and then you know flash forward several years and all of a sudden you know we're selling out places all over the world Know, and that was a dream that all of us had had, you know, um, individually and collectively as a band. So, like, we, you know, going over there and, and, you know, playing Helsinki for the first time in Finland and then seeing the, the reaction and, the, you know, kids with the, the heart and crosshairs tattoos and all that. I think just touring the way we did, um, you know, a few years ago, um, it, was a, it was a dream come true. We had a lot of great memories. I mean, we... We killed ourselves doing it, but like it was. Well, all the album titles kind of come, right? Like, they they kind of foreshadow the future after the release. Like, until there's nothing left of us, we literally toured <laughs> until the band broke up almost, um, and like it was relentless. I think we toured for it's like almost three years on that. I think almost, three years almost. on that record. Um, and I think my favorite memory of of Kill Hannah was just going over to UK for the second time and playing that festival. Yeah, and watching like ten thousand kids that That's never heard the, our music the, like just jump up and down. The first know? time we went, we officially went as a band to the UK. We went uh, with our friends Shiny Toy Guns, and it was, it was, fairly unannounced because it was a last minute thing for us, and and we just sort of played these like really tiny clubs with them, um, and we came back several months later, um, and what Greg's talking about specifically is this this show at an arena in in London and literally playing in front of 10,000 
fans like all the way in the back still with Kill Hannah and stuff and we were blown I remember the reaction for us and yeah. all, like that we looked at each other on stage like how did this happen so fast yeah because our, our record didn't come out over there we had no press over there we had no radio right. nothing it was just like completely underground and I think a lot of t- people there heard us for the first time right. and just immediately reacted to the music yeah, yeah. it was great Malin what about you? my favorite memory probably in Fargo North Dakota Papa Roach we were on tour with Papa Roach I remember that blizzard <laughs> and I was trying to take my drums no I was I was loading back up our trailer with with my drums and the grip tape uh, on the trailer door was gone so it's snowing and it's I think 10 below yeah and I'm carrying a kick drum walking up the ramp to put it in the trailer and I slip and fall and I had been now, sick for about five days? yeah and I and I think I'd been sick for about five days <laughs> and I was wearing this ridiculous huge coat because I hate the cold and I remember just laying there and wanting to give up <laughs> but that was my favorite was that the, memory was yeah that from the time that the, the big cabinet fell over yes that, that was in Lawrence that, Kansas that was in Lawrence oh yeah I that was there yeah. for that, that these yeah. big cases that, it was literally the size of like a counter depth refrigerator and I was standing there talking to Malin and he's pulling it out with a cigarette in his mouth and then I turn my back for one second I hear this noise and I turn around and he's laying underneath it the it, it fell like the wicked it witch fell. of the west it's his feet sticking out <laughs> It fell on me. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite part of the Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> that was on the Aiden tour. Yeah, yeah that was Silverstein, Silverstein and Aiden, Aiden tour, yeah. It 2006. Dies. It dies today. It dies today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it with <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, yes. All right. 2013 is about to come to an end. Uh, what can fans expect in the new year? Do you have any plans to do shows or are you going to Okay. Um, so yeah. So I mean, uh, the way the scenes change, I think, is just the way you distribute an album, the way you record an album, and the way you tour now. I mean, to do a six-week tour like we used to do um, costs thousands of dollars, and, and a lot of bands can't afford that anymore. So I think it's really strategically playing shows like this one-off, um, and just playing certain markets that you know you have a fan base in. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it does eliminate some of the, you know, B markets where we do have fans, but we're hoping they like travel, um, you know, to see shows in the in the future. And then, you know, God, I mean, everything's changed about the music industry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's where do you see it? Where do you see it going? I mean, I think the the power is definitely going more back to the bands. Um, I think to, to make the music they want, and then and just and fans yeah. now. It's like direct, right? Yeah, you know, it's like people want hard copies again of, of of CDs. You know, like there's there's a demand for that. There's a demand for vinyl. You know, uh, for a while it looked like because everything's digital and all of, you know all these amazing record stores have closed and you know you really did have to wonder about you know kids. You know, there's an entire generation of kids that won't know that feeling of going into a record store and you know browsing through CDs and stuff, but. But you're seeing, uh, you know, just from touring a lot um, recently, that you know people want the product in their hand, and whatever. So I don't know. I mean, it's still kind of too early, but it it seems like people are, you know, nobody wants music to go away. Nobody wants bands to to stop recording. You know, they understand. I think, I think they're starting to understand that like the money isn't there unless you're, um, you know. I've been a band with a career of 30 years or more. Yeah, you got, I mean, you got to make music because you love it. Right. Yeah. Dummy. Hey. hey. <laughs> Kemba Walters. <laughs> Ages, everyone. You know what? Um, um, uh, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one. Sorry. I don't know. Um, yeah, so yeah. does that answer the question? Yeah. I think it does. I think that answers the question. Is there anything else? Thank you for your dedication, your patience yeah. <laughs> for us to play another show and release another record. And, um, you know, I guess we won't stop and, unless our fans really stop, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I want to thank Dan <laughs> for, for his time today. <laughs> thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Thank you.